Alrighty, so let's add another component. We're trying to breathe through the nose, right? So the nose actually is gonna come back and then I'm gonna pretend my hand and my fingers are actually the tube of the airway. So here we go, we're breathing through the nose and then my hand is actually gonna be that tube that goes all the way back to the throat. Well, if you're not breathing very well, you're gonna end up with a very narrow airway. See how narrow it is? See, when you look at it that way, it's really narrow, but sometimes people look at it this way. It looks pretty wide, right? But it's not. Look how narrow it is. This is a 3D printout of a narrow airway. So now this person isn't breathing through their nose. More than likely they're breathing through their mouth and everything's swollen back here. This is usually where the tonsils are, all swollen and poofy and the adenoids. And then they start snoring and they have sleep apnea. And there you go, lots of noise, no oxygen and brain fog and all the other comorbidities of sleep apnea usually. So for children, it could be the ADAD, ADHD consequences, poor performance in school, bedwetting, very big psychological problems. They can't function, they can't retain information, they're bullying. Well, basically they're not happy in their skins. Um, it happens for adults too. So the adults, same thing, can't go, they keep having to go to the bathroom all night hypertension, the risk for cardiovascular disorders, risk for GERD, um, the risk for diabetes, hypothyroidism, cancers, polycystic ovarian syndrome, strokes, propensity for strokes, um, a morass of disorders that actually all funnel in with one basic diagnostic feature is having an inappropriate airway, very narrow, unable to breathe, lack of nasal breathing also. That's it for now.